Hi, my name is Robert Holland. I came to Life Covenant Sanctuary in early 2011. I was struggling with alcoholism, gambling, respect for my wife. I really wasn't leading my family the right way. I was facing a divorce, battling depression. Our family business was starting to slip and no amount of alcohol, no friends, and no amount of fun in the nightlife was helping me. Hi, I'm Bianca Holland, and before I started attending Life Covenant Sanctuary, I was angry, I was bitter, I was a mess. (laughs) Um, I was selfish, self-absorbed. All I cared about was my image, what I looked like, what I appeared like to others. I really wasn't seeking change. I really wasn't seeking a relationship with God. Honestly, I didn't even know if I believed in God. Um, I was tough because life handed me some tough situations and I was rough around the edges. Um, I was struggling in my marriage and um, I was sick of it. So I was just living my life to please myself. So I grew up with a pretty wonderful mother and father. However, when I was about maybe 12 or 13 years old, um, it was a pretty nasty divorce that they went through. It was pretty difficult for my younger brother and sister and myself. Um, Shortly after that separation, uh, I would say that I immediately um, turned to alcohol at the young age of about 12, 13 years old, uh, experimenting with drugs, looking at pornography, uh, anything really to just get my my mind off of uh, my my parents uh, being divorced. Um, I really started uh, at a very young age, even looking back at it, was involved with gambling. Uh, Ever since I was in, in middle school, playing cards, flipping quarters, flipping dollars, betting on every single football game or basketball game. And then as I got into high school, it just continued to get worse and worse and worse. And um, and then it even went to a next level and um, I began to have some friends and uh, uh, begin to sell drugs. And, uh, I'm not, not proud of it. And right in between that, I, uh, I, did, I did meet my wife, Bianca, and uh, we started a family together. We had our, our, our first son at the time, and uh, I was still being a knucklehead, and I was running around the streets. Everywhere that I went, it doesn't matter if it was gentlemen's clubs or in the casinos, again, uh, she would follow me and come with me everywhere uh, that I went because she loved me not realizing that I was sowing so many seeds of destruction. Uh, Throughout our marriage, um, my alcoholism was so bad that she would find me passed out and asleep uh, in the car outside or uh, in our uh, office, in our room. And I remember one specific night that I was gambling actually online and um, and I had a, a, a bottle of liquor that I was drinking while I was uh, actually gambling online because the addiction was so bad that if I couldn't be in the casino then I would just do it online and I remember um, while I was inebriated one night I remember my wife walking in uh, to the room and, and looking at me and actually saying to me, Rob, what would you say if I told you that I would leave you if you didn't stop doing this? It, it hurts me to say that I answered her as honestly as I could at the time, and I told her, well, then you might leave me. During some of these uh, evenings uh, of of intoxication, I would 
unfortunately uh, find myself uh, in predicaments of stepping out on my wife and then waking up the next morning so hungover and just thinking, what have I done? For years, I asked my husband to change. I asked him to be the husband that I needed him to be, to be with me, to settle down. Um, we got married at a very young age, and we had a child at a very young age. Um, and he was more concerned with hanging out with his friends and living the nightlife. And um, it just was weighing on me. It was, it was, it was straining me. And um, I remember this one particular conversation that we had. He, um, I was, you know talking to him and telling him, honey, you know, we, we really got to get it together. And he says, you just need to get a hobby. <laughs> so that was a very pivotal point in our marriage where I began to become very bitter. And I had the mentality of you can't beat him, then join him. And so I began um, just following his lead and, and allowing myself to go down a path that I knew better. And this eventually led to me stepping out on my marriage. Um, I am now proud of that. Um, it happened and it was devastating. Um, but at that time, I felt like it was justified. I felt like what he had done to me, the years of the mental abuse and the exhaustion of, emo of emotions um, just weared me down and I just, um, I justified it. And um, after years of living this double life that I was living, I found myself in a place of just frustration and shame and disappointment with myself, but at the same time, I just wanted out. I told my husband I wanted a divorce, and I gave him all the information. I, I shared with him all of my deep, dark secrets, everything that I had done to betray our marriage and our trust, and I left. People began to come in my path and, and tell me about a little bit of more, more about going to church and through the Word of God and the men and women of God here I was uh, baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with God's Holy Spirit and it forever changed my life. When I left my husband I felt like I was finally free from this toxic relationship that I had been in for the last 10 years. I felt like I had this liberty because I had released all this information that I had been hiding for so long and I was just ready to live my best life. And um, so ironically, I continued in the same path that I was living with my husband and going to clubs and nightlife and trying to be super fabulous, thinking that that was going to fill this void. I was so vain. I was thinking that my looks and my wittiness was going to get me somewhere. And so every night I would come home after long nights of being out partying and VIP and this and that, and I would come home and I would still empty. I was still, I still felt something was missing. Um, and meanwhile, my husband had started to change and he had started going to church and I started to notice something different about him. I remember seeing this man that for the last 10 years was so destructive that I really did not care for at all. I, I had so much anger and hatred towards my husband. But this man whom I once knew as evil, I started to see right before my eyes the change that was happening in his life. And it was actually hard to believe. Um, I was very apprehensive about it because I felt like he was just doing this to win me back. Um, but the reality is that there was something peaceful and there was something in his eyes that I could see that was working in him. Um, at the time, I didn't know it was God. Um, now I do know um, the, the purity of the Holy Spirit was in his heart and it had changed him. This man who was, you know, one way for 10 years overnight like that was just a different person. Um, but of course, I was in denial because I was afraid. And um, I remember one particular night I was on the phone with him. Him and my, he and I were sharing custody of my son, so we had to talk. And he tells me, Bianca, you know, talking to God or praying is no different than just talking to God. You just speak to him. Um, of course, I'm like, Psst, don't talk to me about God. <laughs> you need God. I don't need God. <laughs> 
Um, so I ignored him, but the words really sat with me. Um, anyhow, that night I lay there in my apartment and my whole life just flashed before my eyes and I realized that I had lost my identity. I realized that I was lonely, I was broken, I was miserable, no man, no club, no amount of makeup, no expensive clothes, no jewelry, no nice cars, none of that. None of that could fill the void. I couldn't shop enough to fill the void that I felt. And this moment, it just happened so quickly but so slowly at the same time. But that night, um, I broke and I was crying hysterically in my bed, realizing what a disaster my life really was. And so my husband's words replayed in my mind and it was just, I guess, I said, let's try this. And I looked up to my ceiling and as I'm there crying in the fetal position on my bed, I looked up and I yelled, help me, help me. I shouted to God, help me. And that's it. That's all I said was help me. I fell asleep. And the next morning, I was, there was this rush of sorrow and this rush of, of just feeling bad for everything that I had done to my husband. And I called him and I said, I'm sorry. And I said, I'm willing to give this another try. So he rushed over to my apartment and we spent the entire day together. And um, later on in that day, it was a Wednesday night, my son Robbie was begging me, please mom, let me get baptized. I wanna get baptized. So I said, okay. And my husband said, you know, if we're gonna try to work on our marriage, we really need to put God in the middle of it. I didn't really know how I felt about that, but I came. And um, when I came into this church, to be honest, my arms were crossed and I just, I had already shut the idea down. Um, but God had another plan and I walked in with my arms crossed, but I walked out with my hands lifted. And I surrendered my life to Christ that night. I ended up getting baptized with my son, Robbie. And it was the best decision I ever made in my life. And my life has never been the same since. And that was 10 years ago. And here we are. Amen. By the grace of God, um, 10 years sober, totally delivered from alcohol, gambling, the nightlife. God is just so good. Amen. I'd like to uh, share a scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And I believe with all of my heart that our marriage is made new. Amen through Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'd like to share that the church is a place of safety. The church is a place of comfort. And I really believe, we really believe that without Life Covenant Sanctuary and the leadership of the church, the men and women of God here, the love uh, that is in the church, that we wouldn't be here today. Give it a chance. Uh, give it a try. Uh, Jesus is pursuing you and wants to restore you. That's it. You have nothing to lose. We invite you to Life Covenant Sanctuary in Bradenton, Florida to worship with us, to praise the Lord with us, and to take a journey. It doesn't hurt to try. All you're going to do is visit and see what God can do in your life. We hope to see you soon. God bless. God bless.